Welcome. My name is William Watson, and thank you for joining me on my podcast. This is Call to Serve Podcast. I was I was reading through some material uh, by Walter Martin, a book called Kingdom of the Cults. Oh, man. Dumb gods don't speak. Only want you. A man told you you had to come to him, have no intellect at all, but people give all they have to that God. But we have a God that sees us and interact with us, whether we know it or not. We have a good God that sees us, and I'll be right back to talk about that, that he sees you, and he loves you. Okay, let's get started. My name is William Watson. This is Call the Sir Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking your time out to listen. Those who choose to listen to the whole thing, thank you. I hope that the Lord bless you just for being here. Let me start out with prayer. Father, thank you for your glorious presence. Thank you for your word. Help me to share it with clarity. Ask you to anoint me to speak your word with truthfulness and honesty and openness. Help someone to be able to hear what you are trying to say through me. In your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Okay. Let's dive right into this. He sees you. He sees everything that goes on in his creation. We are his creation, and he sees everything. He sees the good things we do. He sees the bad things we do. That we do. His eyes are open unto the world. I can't explain how he sees you in another country. And me sitting here in Charlotte, North Carolina at the same time. Or those in another state. He sees us at the same time and interact with us at the same time. That is something that we would never be able to comprehend That is the biggest difference between him and other gods. See, the other gods, so-called gods, which actually are not gods, the Bible says, dumb idols, you have to go to them. But him, all you guys do, all you have to do is kneel and pray. He's right here. Jeremiah 23, 23 to 24. I am, am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off, as I just said. Can anyone hide himself in a secret place so I shall not, f- not see him, says the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth? Says the Lord, He fills the whole place, heaven and earth. This word "fill" goes beyond just filling up a glass. He's everywhere at the same time, talking to me, talking to you, ministering to His word to you and to those around us at the same time. And theology, I'm not a theology person, even though I have been, well, let's go on. In theology, there's some words that we throw around. You might have heard these words before, these concepts about the attributes of God. Now, the first one, 
It's found in Revelation 1.8. God is infinite. Nobody create, create, cre created him. He always been. There's no beginning of God. There's no end of God. God simply exists. In Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God. Simply stated, God exists. That's it. There's no beginning of him. There's no ending of him. Now, here we go. Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha. The beginning. And the Omega. And it, restate, it restates that in the next verse. The beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is he and who was, who is and who was and who is to come? The might almighty. Let me read that again. The Lord, who is? And who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He has no beginning. There's no end. And this God is who we serve. We call that infinite. He's infinite. The next one is found in um, Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 8. And Malachi 3.6. Let me go to Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. His character don't change. His essence don't change. Malachi 3.6. We call that the immutability of God. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Giving a warning to Israel. But God has not changed. He still requires a holy life. His character don't change. His requirements don't change. He don't change. The immutability, immutability of God. He never changes. These other gods, so-called gods, they need someone to build them. They need someone to go in the woods, cut down a tree, and fashion and shape them, or an iron worker, a leather worker, or some type of person with craft to fashion that God. Or a God that is based on a man's idea. But this God don't need any help for anyone. God is self-sufficient. That's the third one. And that is found in Acts 17. 24, God who made the world and everything in, in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in te temples made with hands, nor he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, And all things. He don't need your worship. He require your worship, but he don't need it to survive. Back when I was a kid watching these stupid movies, Hercules. And there was a scene when they were saying that the gods need your worship. That what that is the thing that keeps them alive. Not our God. He don't need your worship. He told Moses one time, I start over. I don't need you. But he requires us to worship him, but he don't need it. 
He is self-sufficient, all self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything from me. I talked about giving to God. Not because I have to give. He needs me to give something to him, but because he delights in us giving to him. And he's everywhere at the same time, as I said before. That is called omnipresence. That is found in Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. He made the world and everything in it. If you look, you see how complicated things are. How can he? How? Evolution. Really? The Big Bang Theory. Two plasmas, masses, or whatever collided together and an explosion happened. But nobody could ever tell you where did they come from? Where did those two masses of energy came from? God, it says in the Bible, let there be light. There's, there's your explosion right there. And he can create all things. He's all powerful. Powerful enough just, to, just with a spoken word created the world. The Bible uh, give us uh, uh, insight into how he did it. We, he don't want us to dwell on, on um, how he did it. But appreciate what he done. I know many people try to fill in the gaps of uh, Genesis, Genesis one and two, the gap theory. Come on, man, just appreciate what God has done, and just dwell with what He has given us and what He has shown us. We don't reach back and try to fill in the gaps that the Bible does not uh, dwell on information he does not does it give us he's all powerful Se self existed nobody created him he always been he never changes he has need of no one he's all powerful since he's all powerful I'm the, he's everywhere. He's omniscient. He knows everything. All powerful. Omnipotent is the word. And that next one is omniscient. All knowing. Psalms 139. Verse 1, 2, 6. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting downs and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with my ways. For there is not a word of my tongue. Behold, you behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind me and before me. You put a hedge behind me and before me and laid your hand upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain it. The knowledge that God exists, self-existed, never changes. Uh, he don't have no needs of anybody. He's all-powerful, all-knowing. He knows what I'm going to say 
days, years before I'm going to say it. That's a good God. That's a powerful God. The next one I already said earlier. Omnipresence. He's everywhere. Psalms 139. Same chapter, verse 8 through 10. It's He's everywhere. If I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost, uttermost parts of the sea, you are there. Even there your hand shall lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be my light. Why? Because he's there. Shall be my light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shine as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. He is a good God. He's everywhere. I can't escape him. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I go to heaven, he's there. Don't matter where I go, he's there. Because he fills the whole earth and all of heaven. He's infinite, immutable, self-existent, um, omnipotent, omnipresent, I mean, omnip- omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. This is a powerful God, and he is on your side. He's for you. This God cares all about your going ins and your sitting down. He care about whatever you did. He knows what you did. He knows how you behave. He knows how you love him and follow him. And he, that's why he bless you, because you are his children. He knows some of the bad things you did. That's why... In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, he is not bawling his fists up saying, You better confess your sins or I'm going to get you. His arms is out saying, You need to confess your sins. Because that builds up a hedge between me and you. I don't want it. I want to embrace you. But I can't do it as long as you got stuff in your life. He is entitled to say that because he's all powerful. He sees everything. He sees you. He just wants you to come to him. Have a relationship with him. And you say to me, people have said in the past, You don't know my story. He knows your story. He knows your story. Uh, Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near those who have a broken heart and saved such as a contrite spirit. He knows your story. He knows everything you've been through, everything you're going through right now, and he has a solution for it. But he wants you to come to him. He wants you to yield. You say, I'm already a Christian. I'm saved. Then, then the problem is so many times we talk so much, we talk ourselves out of deliverance and out of a blessing. Sometimes we just need to be quiet and be still and let God have his way. Because this can't go on forever. I'm running out of time. Second Kings 7.3. Now, 
there was four lepers who were sitting at the gates. The Syrians had laid uh, siege to the city. Now, those lepers couldn't get any food inside the city. They was outside the gate, but the Syrians had laid siege to the city, so they were in between. Those lepers decided, well, they didn't decide it. They know they couldn't go in the city. They know if they go to the Syrians for food, they were starving. They needed food. If they go to the Syrians, they might get killed right away. If they go in the city, they might get killed. But this is the thing I want you to look at. Not their situation. Because your situation may is not that dire as theirs. I don't think it is. It may be. But anyway, listen to them. Now, there were four leopard, leopard, leopards men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here till we die? Why are you sitting there till you die? Why are you sitting there moaning and bemoaning your situation when God is ready to give you a way out deliverance? Put the past away. He's here for you. He's a good God. I just told you how great he was. He's everywhere, all-powerful, all-seeing. His presence is everywhere. You don't have to go to another man and ask him to pray for you. You don't have to go to an, make a pilgrimage to another country to see God. I don't have to turn in a certain direction to pray to him because he's here everywhere. All I got to do is just call on his name. That's it. He's a good God. He's everywhere. And this God, as I said before, he's on your side. He wants you to come to him. It is his plan and desire to know you. This powerful, how can you not? A God is so powerful as that. Because there is no other God. There are only idols and false religion. He's the only great one. And he's for you. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for all the wonderful and the great and the mighty and the holy things you have done. I praise you in the name of Jesus. I honor you, Father, for what you did and going to do miles from now, years from now, even now, Lord Jesus, you're working. And I thank you for it in your name, for you're truly worthy of it. And I give you the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. And I will see you on the next podcast. God bless.